Hi and welcome to another datatier.net tutorial. I am proud to announce the release of datatier.net version 2.1 which now supports .NET Core 3.0 and Blazor. In this video I modified the Microsoft Blazor to do tutorial where now I persist the data to SQL Server using datatier.net. To run this sample, you will need Visual Studio 16.3, which just released on Monday of this week. You will also need SQL Server or SQL Server Express. I included the links to both of these down in the description of this video. They're also shown here. And I want to say a big shout out to Microsoft for not charging individual developers for Community Edition and SQL Server Express. Hopefully you're familiar with C Sharp and SQL Server, but if not, you're in the right place if you want to learn. And finally, I have a question for any experienced Entity Framework developers out there. Let me know if you think this is easier or harder to set up a new project with datatier.net versus Entity Framework. Leave your answers in the comments below, please. This video is split into three parts. In part one, I'm going to show you how to set up datatier.net on your machine. In part two, we're going to create our data tier for our project. And then finally, in part three, we're going to create a Blazor project and put it all together. All right, thank you. That was Cody, my alter ego. Get it? Cody? All right, tough crowd. So we're going to continue on and go ahead and clone datatier.net. So I've got the URL listed here as well as it's listed in the video description. But since I already have it copied to my clipboard, I'm just going to open a new instance of Visual Studio. Click on Clone or Checkout Code. I'm going to paste in the URL. And here I'm going to accept the default directory and just hit Clone. This takes just a second. Okay, so now I've got datatier.net open. I'm going to go ahead and open this solution up here for datatier.net. And I'll minimize everything. So now we have this part done. Now we're going to run datatier.net. And this has to restore the NuGet packages, so it takes just a second. All right, let me minimize Visual Studio so you can see a little better. Everything else I have open, which is way too much. Okay, so now this is a little setup control I created. First step is to create a database named datatier.net.database. So I'm going to go over here to SQL Server Management Studio. And I'm going to create a new database. I'm going to give, give it a name of datatier.net.database and just hit OK. Alright. And then as the little instructions over here say, we're going to uh, check the box. It just says the database has been created. And then click here as the little arrow indicates. And now we are back in SQL Server Management Studio. I'm gonna, the database is already selected for you in the use statement, so our database has now been created. Now, if you want to install the templates for the .NET framework, you're welcome to go ahead and do that now. But I'm going to skip it, because just for speed. So we're going to install just the .NET Core project templates. These are installed via NuGet, and there's the command line that I'm showing on the screen right now. All right, so that's been installed onto your computer. And then the final step is to build the connection string and set up the app.config. So I'm going to type in my server name. And I'm just going to use Windows Authentication. Build connection string. Test, and it passed. I'm going to hit Install Connection String and update the app.config. And finished. And now we have to restart Visual Studio because the configuration file cannot be updated during runtime. And now we'll run it one more time. And now you should see test database connection passed. Now that is the end of part one. And now you have datatier.net set up. So now we, whenever you create your own projects, you won't have to do. This is only a one-time setup thing. All right, now in part two, we're going to create our data tier for the Blazor to-do list project. I listed the URL here of the full working version. If you want to just clone it, you can uh, save creating it. But if you want to walk through creating it, we're going to go ahead and do that now. This is a tutorial. So the first step is to create a new database in SQL Server Management Studio named Blazor List. Name is Blazor List. Hit OK. And I'm going to open. 
open it up, create a new table. The first field is called ID. It's an integer. None of the fields allow null. Technically, the is done could, but it defaults to false, so you don't have to do anything. I'm going to set primary key as true, and I'm also going to come over here and say identity, identity specification, yes. Okay, now the second field is called title. It's 255 in Vercare. Doesn't allow nulls. And also is done, and that's a bit, which converts to a Boolean in C Sharp. All right, and we're going to go ahead and save our table. We're going to call this table to do. In the next step in datatier.net, let's click the new project button. I'm going to run the exe version for this. I have a shortcut on my desktop. Click the new project. I'm going to give the project a name. It's going to be Blazor to do. In the project folder, for this, we're going to have to time travel to the future real quick. Okay, we're now in the future. What we need to do is create a new Blazor project. So we're going to go ahead and do that in Visual Studio. Click on Create New Project. I am going to just type in Blazor. Select Blazor app and hit Next. I'm going to give my project a name and I'm going to call it Blazor To Do. But I'm going to select a different location for this. Sorry, give me one second. I'm going to put it where my tutorial is going to go, which is in Projects. I have a folder called GitHub Tutorials. And I have a new folder here we're going to create called Blazor To Do. And we'll select that folder. And we'll let that and we'll create our new Blazor project. We'll say it's a Blazor server app. And for some reason that is showing Linux. I don't know why, but that should be okay. We'll just hit create. All right, and now we have our new project created. And now we need to delete the contents of the data folder because we're going to use it for our needs. We don't care about weather forecast at this point. So let me go ahead and go over here to our data folder in the project that was just created and delete the weather forecast and weather forecast service. And what we're going to do is right click on data and say open folder in file explorer and that is going to be our project folder. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and now we're going to go back to the past. Okay, we're back from the future. I'm going to go ahead and paste in my project file. All right, now our project name and folder are set up. So next we need to check the .NET Core checkbox. And I'm going to go ahead and create the data tier in the project folder. Data tier has been created. I also want to now enable Blazor features, and I'm going to select the bindings of Allow Binding. And I'll just go ahead and hit Next. And I'm going to click on Add Database. I'm going to type in my server name. And I'm going to select Windows Authentication and just hit the Refresh Databases button. And I'm going to select the database Blazor list and hit save. And now I'm going to hit save again on the project wizard. And now we're going to, I'll just show you real quick the manage data. Here's the only table in our database. Okay, this is the data editor control. If this was a larger project and you had any tables or fields you wanted to exclude, when you uncheck a field or a table, the save button becomes enabled. I'm not going to make any changes. We're going to go ahead and build this entire large data tier here. But I am going to click the Create Callback button. That just saves automatically. That's a little separate than the Save button. But if you click that, what that does is that's only if you have enabled Blazor services set to true in your project settings. 
that just means that when you um, when this table is code generated, and I'll show you the kind of deep dive here in just a second. Let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and build the first time, so this doesn't become a really long video. And here's our store procedures .sql. I already had this open once, so we'll just hit execute. And this is all the uh, you know drop does a drop and create for all the existing. Uh, Core procedures that were created, and it does a you know here's the insert you know just a, this is a real this was a really small table that's why it was actually good for a demo because it's a lot easier to build and it's really fast. So now that we have this build, we're going to go into the manage data button one more time. I could have done this all at once, but I was just trying to show you. We came here mainly to show you that you could exclude tables and fields is why we were here. But I went ahead and did the create callback while we were building. Now the Blazor Data Services is a brand new feature, and that's why Blazor became version 2.1 when I released, because they built all these new features for .NET Core for the 2.0 release. And then when I started working with Blazor, I couldn't figure out any way to determine when the binding code changed. So what I did was, uh, now I think I know another way to do it, but I already did this, so I think this works pretty well. Here's the Services folder. This is the, uh, comes in your, it defaults to the project folder in your gateway <coughs> in your uh, from your project templates when we created the project earlier in this step we're going to go ahead and just save that now if you make any changes it'll uh, let you know and you know you can, you'll have to save it what we're going to do next is install the NuGet package for the blazor data services so we're going to go ahead and do that and then finally we're going to create the data services in the gateway class and that here's the two new classes that were created: the To Do Data Watcher and the To Do Service. And I'll show you both of those. But we have now built our project with DataTier.net, so we have completed part one and part two, and we are now ready for Blazor. Okay, we are back to the future. One of the problems with exceeding the speed of light is the space-time ripples sometimes create some effects that you know make some slight changes, and due to the butterfly effect. By the time we get back to the future, things are not the same, but I think we'll survive any paradoxes. The first thing we're going to do is modify startup to C sharp. Sorry, I can't talk. We're going to go ahead and do that now. So here is our project. First thing we're going to do is delete the blazer.todo that is left over from Microsoft's weather project. And we're going to change weather forecast service to to-do service. And this will compile later on when we add the project references that in our data tier. So we're going to go ahead and close this. We're done with it, and I'll save it. Next, we're at the nav bar. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the bottom one because we don't need it. And I am going to change this from counter to to-do list. Sorry, I'll make it. Yeah. And I'm going to change this to say to-do list. Okay? And that's all the changes we need to do to nav bar. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Okay, now we're going to delete the pages for the counter and fetch data. Counter, so you're under pages, delete, and fetch data. We don't need them. Okay, next we are going to modify the index page text and add the data tier projects to our solution. All right, I'm going to open up the pages folder and open up the index.razor. I'm going to change this from hello world to blazer to do. And I'm going to cheat for one second and switch over to my finished version and copy that to my two clipboards just so we build the same thing. There. I'll leave that text up for a second if anybody wants to type it in. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, create a new solution folder for our data tier. I'm going to call it data. I'm going to first come over here and say exclude from project. I'm sure there's some way to just include those projects. I've, I've included them in the solution and they still, I can't add a reference to it unless I come over here and do this. So I'm going to just say add existing project and say application logic component. I'm going to add the data access component. I'm going to add the gateway. And finally, the object library. 
All right, so now we have our projects and our solution. I'm going to add our reference from here. So just go to Dependencies, Add Reference. And we're going to add a reference using the Data Gateway and the Optic Library. And just hit OK. OK, now we're going to create our page to do list.razor. And we're going to cheat a little bit and get some already finished content from GitHub. OK, now we're going to create our to do list.razor. To do that, just copy the index page and we're going to paste it. And I'm going to rename this. And it's just going to be to do list.razor. And now I'm going to go to my GitHub page for this project that's already built and go to the Pages tab. Go to the to do list.razor. Click on the Raw tab, and that'll give us everything without the line numbers. Hit Control A to copy everything to your clipboard. Click on Copy there. I just right click and click on Copy. And I'm going to go over to our to do list.razor. I'm going to erase everything that's already in here. That's the, yeah, that was just our, from our index page. Okay, so now we have everything copied. And I'm going to save it. And I'll go over this here in just a second. I want to get it compiling first. Okay, now the next thing I want to get from this project, I want to go to the www root folder. We're going to go to the CSS folder, the site.css. And again, we're going to click on, click on raw. And I want to start down here. This is the few things that I added. Everything above the HTML and body that was already there. So here's the few things that I added. I don't. I didn't add this. Everything up to clear. That import URL was already there. Okay. So now we're going to go back over to our project, and I'm going to click on the www root folder. Go in the CSS folder. And I'm going to click here, and right between the HTML and the import statement, hit paste of what we just copied. Okay, and the last thing we need to get from GitHub is I have one image I need to get. So we're going to go to the Images folder. We're going to click on the Delete button.png and right click and say Save Image As. Now I am going to go over here to my project that I've got, which is in C Projects. GitHub tutorials, Blazor to do, WW root. I'm going to create a new folder at the same level as CSS, and this is just going to be images. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to just save this as delete button. All right, now we need to build our connection string and set the environment variable to hold it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm here in the datatier.net project. In the datatier.net again, drill down and go to the tools folder. There's a program called Connection String Builder. Let's go ahead and open that. You might need to restore the NuGet packages, but it should just run. Okay, it does. Now I just realized I left my server name checked in. I'll fix that, but that's in the app.config. So I'm going to just set my database name here to Blazor List. I'm going to use Windows Authentication. Build my connection string. Test and copy. Now we're going to go over here to Windows 10 and say Edit System Environment Variables. I'm going to click on here, Environment Variables. I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to call the variable name Blazor To Do. And I'm going to call the connect and the variable value. I'm going to paste in our connection string and hit OK, and hit OK again. OK, now we just have a couple of final steps to go. The first is set the connection name. And then finally, we have to add one using statement. So let's tab back over here to our project. In the data tier, we have an application logic component project. In the connection folder, there's a connection class. Open it up and erase the little text message here. <coughs> excuse me, and change that to blazer to do and hit save. And then the final step is to go to the startup.csharp class, and we have to add one using statement to fix that. So let's go ahead and do that. Just say using data gateway.services, and we'll go ahead and hit save. May I get a drum roll, please? All 
Okay, this is our Blazor to-do list project. We're going to add our first item, test if it works. All right, it works. Now, next thing we're going to do is create, I just want to create a second item to see how create a second item. Okay, and then finally, we're gonna just going to see if we can mark one. You notice here, this says nothing's completed. Just to hit test, you know, if you, people say two of two, or this is all instant. This saves us as you do it. I'm going to just show you how the, there's how you delete one. I don't even have a prompt or anything on it. And if you want to edit, all you have to do is come over here and test if this works, changing the text. And when you leave, it saves. And just to show you that we're not doing any trickery, if you start the program again, this will be persisted. So go back, and our one value is still here. Now, I'm going to just show you a little bit about how all this works. If you want to stick around, I won't spend much time, but I just want to show you some of the features that we generated kind of quickly there because I was in a hurry to get it all built in a kind of short period of time. Here's the object library. Now, this only has one. You can delete this temporary class that's only here to make sure your namespaces compile. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here's the todo.data class. This is all of the, this contains the three fields, you know, the, here's the three fields in your uh, table. And there's one extra um, property here called is new. And this is just read only, and it just says if the ID has been set, then it's not new. And then it will return false. And then here is the item changed callback. This is also, when you added the callback earlier in this, uh, when we created our data tier, it adds a private variable and it adds this little callback. And then notice if the title changes, it does a little test here, it says, has it changed? Okay, yes, it has changes. So if it has changes and a callback, it'll notify the uh, subscribers to the delegate that there's been changes. So, and I'll just show you here, the is done has the same thing. Now the ID doesn't have it because the ID is the primary key, but that's a whole nother story. And uh, so the only other thing I want to show you here is in our services folder, which we code gen. Here's the gateway, which I think I could even use the gateway without this service, but since Blazor kind of likes these little services classes, I just created that little Blazor data factory. The gateway is really the, this is what your client's really is doing everything. The service is just kind of wrapping methods for here. And here's all your, this just calls the delete, find, you know, there's the, the load and save, <coughs> excuse me. And then the last thing I want to show you here is the to-do data watcher. This is kind of neat, I think, the way this works. So what it does is it's just a item changed callback, you know, as you, you know, as I show you here, it's just got the item changed. Now, the only thing I use this for is for when the changes happen when you edit a record. When you add a record, if you look at the, uh, let's go to the pages folder real quick and go to the to-do razor. When you add, you'll see there's a little method here that just says uh, on click add to do. And if you go down here, I'll just search for add to do. Okay, here's the method. So this just creates a new to-do based on that title, which is bound to this title right here. And is whenever a uh, the add button's clicked, it calls to the to-do service to says save. And it, by the time it comes back from this service, the uh, the ID is already set. But then if it saves, what we do is we reload the, the get to-do list. This is every time we load, and I'll show you this real quick. Whenever we load all the, the list of to-do items, we create a data watcher, and we just say watch. And I give it a list of to-dos, and I'll go into that real quick. Okay, all it does is it just iterates through the list of to-dos and it adds that callback property. So after you load the data, you put this callback on it and then if it changes from the time you load it, you need to save it. Now I admit in this program, I would imagine this is saving every single on every single keystroke when you do an edit, which is not very efficient. If this was a real application, I've seen some things that like wait till there's been a gap for at least, you know, I don't know, three, tenths of a second or something till you stop typing so it's not doing it every single save but it's a tutorial so it's yeah this was just a um, hope you like datatier.net i really like blazer i think it's going to evolve a lot it's you know brand new so a lot of this will probably change over time but i, I just learned blazer about five or six weeks ago and i i'm not bad at javascript <coughs> excuse me but i'm just not a fan of it either so 
to me, being able to do C sharp on the client and the back end is like a dream come true. So, you know, went all in on Blazor so far. I kind of hated to couple datatear.net so much with Blazor, but I think Blazor is going to be around for a while and I really like it. So hopefully you do. And thanks for watching.